Good morning. It's a real pleasure being here today. Triple negative breast cancer, as you know, is a very difficult to treat subtype of breast cancer. Until now, we, we struggle to have targeted therapies. And it's, in contrast to what you just heard about ear positive disease, it, most of the treatment was chemotherapy. Now, we are moving to early triple negative breast cancer. Here. We were here a year ago and talked about the first data with immune therapy and metastatic triple negative breast cancer. Now it's a pleasure to present data in early triple negative breast cancer, where if the trial is positive, we hopefully achieve cure, which is obviously the, the, the most important emperor from my perspective. It's well established that if you give chemotherapy before surgery in, in early triple negative breast cancer, that those patients where the cancer disappears, and this is what we call a pathological complete response, that those patients have a long-term benefit. There's a large meta-analysis that shows Patients who don't have tumor left in the breast at the time we do the surgery, so after chemotherapy, have a massively longer recurrence-free survival and have an overall survival benefit, as you can see here, with a, with a, with a hazard ratio of 0.24 for e, event-free survival and 0.16 for overall survival. Now, to set the scene, in the past we gave anthocyclines and taxanes, and we achieved this path ci in about 40% of patients. If you add in platinum, we achieve a PASI in around 50-52% of patients. And both the FDA and EMA, EMA have said that we can use PASI as an endpoint for, for, for accelerated approval in the neoadjuvant <coughs> setting, but we will obviously have to demonstrate the longer-term benefit in terms of really reducing recurrences. If you look at the chemo 5 to 2 trial, it was a trial for patients with early triple negative breast cancer. Patients either had T1C tumors with lymph node involvement or larger tumors, tumors irrespective of the lymph node involvement. Patients were randomized between the immune checkpoint inhibitor pembrolizumab or placebo, and they, re received, uh, they received six months of preoperative chemotherapy, first 12 weeks of carboplatin and paclitaxel, and then 12 weeks of, of what we call AC or EC, all the way through either with pembrolizumab or with placebo. Patients then had surgery, and this is where we define the, the, or determine the path CR. And after surgery, they continued just on the immune checkpoint inhibitor or placebo for, 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 for another nine cycles. So the trial had two endpoints, and we're presenting the final results for the first endpoint, which is path CR, the complete disappearance of the cancer from the tuber. But we also show very early results for event-free survival, so for the rate of recurrences, at a median follow-up of only 15 months. Now, you will say that's very short for, for breast cancer, but in triple negative breast cancer, if you don't achieve a path CR, the recurrence risk in the first three to five years is about 40 to 50%. So these events, unfortunately, happen relatively early. If you look at the final results for path CR, you can see that in the control arm with platinum, the path CR rate was 51.2%, and this was significantly increased to 64.8% with the addition of pembrolizumab, with a delta with a difference of 13.6%. There's a huge ongoing debate about selecting patients. pd one is one of the markers we've heard in other trials. And so we did an analysis, pre plan analysis in patients with pd one positive tumors, determined by an assay called 2 to C3, and pd one negative tumors. And as you can see, both groups have a significant benefit. Again, the delta is 14.2%, the difference between placebo and pembrolizumab for patients with PD1 positive tumors, and 18% for patients with PD1 negative tumors. At this very early time point, we have very preliminary data for event free survival because the follow up is only 15 months in a, in a curative setting. But what you can see is that, that there's already a difference between the two curves. If you look at the actual events, we had 7.4% 7 7 of the patients in the pembrolizumab arm unfortunately experienced recurrences. 11.8% of patients on placebo experienced recurrence. The hazard ratio is 0.63. This didn't meet the, the, the very, very strict uh, criteria for significance at this very early time point. As you can see, the bottom of the slide is the, the criteria is 0.0000051 to meet, which is was a very, very high bar but we will have subsequent event-free survival analysis coming out very soon. The estimated 18 months event-free survival is 91.3% with pembrolizumab and 85% in the, in, in the placebo group. Now, one key consideration is what's the, what's the cost in terms of side effects. And, and if you look at the side effects in, in blue with pembrolizumab and, and 
and in the, I think the colors don't come out quite, in the lighter color with, with, with placebo. You see, it looks relatively comparable between the two arms. We haven't really had uh, clearly new safety signals. We have slightly more rush with pembrolizumab, but otherwise they're, 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 there's very little difference between those two groups on, on, on average, at least in the common side effects. This is in the phase before surgery where immune therapy is given together with chemotherapy, so most of the side effects you see here are side effects of chemotherapy. If you look at the phase after surgery, where patients receive placebo alone or pembrolizumab alone, you can see the rate of toxicity is very low and there's very little difference between, between those two groups. So our conclusions at this point in time is that chemo 5 to 2 is the first prospective randomized phase 3 trial in early triple negative breast cancer spanning from the neoadjuvant to, to the adjuvant setting. We conclude that the addition of prembolizumab to platinum-containing neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which is the highest bar in terms of path CR rates, resulted in a statistically significant, and in my opinion also clinically meaningful, increase in the path CR rates from 51.2% with chemotherapy alone to 64.8% with pembrolizumab. Neoadjuvant pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy, followed by adjuvant pembrolizumab, showed a favorable trend for EFS compared to chemotherapy alone at this very early time, but with only 50 months follow-up. But of course, subsequent data will be presented relatively soon. The safety profile so far is consistent with what we know for, for each of the regions, and patients obviously continue to be followed up for recurrences, for survival, as well as safe safety. As you're probably aware, pembrolizumab has been granted breakthrough therapy designation based on Keno 173 and ice by 2 trial and we continue to share the results with you in the future. Thank you. So, uh, as you know, pathological complete response is the complete disappearance of tumor cells in breast and in nodes in early breast cancer. And uh, you heard that FDA and DEMA can give an accelerated approval for any agent that increase pathological complete response because PCR is a surrogate of overall survival. So putting in the clinical practice the presentation of this study, the combination of pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy in the neo adjuvant setting increased pathological complete response from 51% in the standard arm to 64% in the combination arm. So this is really a breakthrough result because you can increase PCR and potentially you can increase also overall survival or disease-free survival. What we can tell about the patient who had the response or had the no response to immuno checkpoint. So for all these patients, we have a baseline biopsy. And for those who had no response, we have the residual tumor. So the implications are really great from a scientific point of view. We can better identify those patients who we're more likely responsive to immunotherapy, because if we characterize those patients who had a PCR, we can really identify those patients who will maximize the benefit of immunotherapy. But for those who had no response, we have the residual tumor, and we can better understand the mechanism of resistance to immunocheckpoint inhibitors. So this is really an important trial for which we will have a lot of data also in the futures. So I believe in conclusion that the combination of immunotherapy plus chemotherapy for early triple negative breast cancer, according to the data here presented, is a new standard of care for early breast cancer, the triple negative subtype.